Hi, this is Robert McCune, and this is the case study on parental apathy. Um, category one, what do I know? Um, I know that Mrs. Rose is a new assistant principal at John F. Kennedy School, uh, and that she attends to engage parents and potentially creates a parent organization. Um, at John F. Kennedy School, there is a definitely a lack of parental involvement. Uh, the principal at the school has previously tried to engage the parents um, but he seems really skeptical uh, of that. Um, parents were invited to attend a meeting at the school um, and only eight parents showed up and um, the principal was wondering um, and kind of leaning towards um, just letting them go and not developing any further relationship with that. Um, what do I need to know? Um, I think it'd be helpful to know what the demographics of John F. Kennedy School are. Um, <clears throat> that way you can kind of get a sense of who you're dealing with in the community. Um, and it's always important to know um, what is out there in the community itself. Um, is John F. Kennedy School in a diverse setting um, where there's a, a lot of diversity, where there's a lot of um, different cultures within that uh, school's community? Um, and then what were the previous steps the principal took uh, to engage the parents? It said he had reached out beforehand, um, but it doesn't really go, and it's not clear why um, or how uh, he did that. Um, do the parents support athletics? Sometimes parents are not engaged in the classroom setting, uh, but they do attend athletic events. Um, once again, there's just not enough information, um, and I think that would be important to know. Uh, why is the principal so reluctant to engage the, uh, the community? Did something happen? Um, what made the principal so turned off by uh, parent engagement? And then why is there not a lot of support in the community? Um, even in diverse communities, you still have um, some that are engaged. And so I think it's important to uh, find out why. And then finally, identify the problem. Um, I saw two main issues, one very clear, um, how can Mrs. Rose engage the parents of the school? Um, what can she do to um, get them active and want to be a part of the school? The secondary issue, um, how can Mrs. Rose convince the principal um, that this is an issue that benefits the school? Um, can she convince him that to just turn it over to her? Um, how do you get that reluctance out of the principal um, so that you can enact some positive change? <clears throat> uh, category two, so the proposed plan of action and the strategies for implementation. I think the first step um, that's important is convincing the principal to continue with the meeting that's currently there. That's where um, the case study kind of left off, is kind of where to go from here. And I think that first step is there's eight parents there. There's eight parents who want to be there. You can't let them go without them uh, feeling some support, some positivity. And so that is a starting point uh, to work towards. From there, then it becomes a process. Learn about the demographics of the community. Um, what are some common issues uh, in that community? Um, going into, is there a diverse population in the school where you have to learn from the very different um, kind of student groups? Um, and then what are the schools or the community's traditions? <clears throat> that can go along with the commonalities, find something that people want to be a part of um, and that people can believe in. Next step would be to create a communication plan using the data that you get um, from finding out more about the community that reaches out to the greatest number of parents. Um, using that data, you can engage faculty and even students to troubleshoot the lack of parent, uh, parental involvement, have them fill out a survey, have them... Um, meet with them, meet with students, meet with different classes, and find out why um, parents are not becoming involved in the school. Utilize various means of communication to directly engage with parents. Um, in the module, or in the case study, it, it discussed how, parent, how students were told that there was going to be a parent meeting. Well, if you put that on the students, students are forgetful. They may have other things that they're thinking about. Um, and so that could be one reason why only eight parents showed up. Not because they weren't interested, maybe they didn't know. And so finding various um, communication outlets, social media, um, sending an email home, sending a letter directly to the house, 
uh, are just several ways that you can uh, reach out to parents and to the community. Um, and also, those parents that are there or parents that are involved, ask them for feedback. Um, have you gotten message, uh, messages about the school? Um, do you think the school could do a better job of that? So um, getting out there and just creating a comprehensive communication plan um, to reach the most, the largest number possible. And then step four, present the communication plan to the principal. Um, you have the plan and everything is ready to go. Um, and then it's selling it to the principal because ultimately he's the one that is going to uh, make decision, the decision to move forward with this. So outline reasons and benefits <clears throat> of why this is worth attempting. Um, category three, resolving the issues based on promoting the success of all students. As an administrator, I want the parents of the community to be engaged. Um, when they're engaged, good things happen. Uh, more involved community along with parents provides numerous benefits. Uh, for example, um, you'll probably hear this a couple times in this presentation, um, the more parents are involved, the higher the achievement is in the classroom. Um, it is data proven, um, and so that is probably position number one to help succeed all students. Um, parents and community involvement involves um, expanding the resources of the school, helps to fundraise, allows for business partnerships. All those can provide um, different needs to students so that they can uh, go do the go to a field trip. They can, with a business partnership, um, maybe they can job shadow or have an internship with that business. Everything on that list is, everything is tied to success of students. And then creates uh, a parent-teacher organization or a parent-teacher um, association um, so that you have increased involvement in the school. Um, I know a lot of those organizations do numerous things uh, to help raise uh, awareness, they come in and help out, um, probably prevalent more in elementary schools uh, to help with certain things. And so I think it's very important um, to have those uh, different organizations. And then as a new administrator, um, kind of first three were for the main issue, uh, the main problem. And this one is for the secondary problem, new administration, your administrator can bring in new ideas and perspective to the school. And that's what Mrs. Rose, or as I, as an administrator, would do, um, because it seems like the principal um, is kind of set in their ways, and maybe there needs to be some new life in that school. <clears throat> um, debrief the problem. What was I thinking and feeling? Um, my initial thoughts are I felt sorry. Um, that this was just a negative place to be in. Uh, you have parent apathy, you have administration apathy, apathy it seemed like. The principal was frustrated. Um, so it was just a very negative situation, and I can't imagine that student achievement was high um, for that. Um, initial thought I also had was that I can fix this. Um, try new things, reach out to parents, um, try to just do something to fix that issue. Um, and it's just... It didn't seem like a lot had been done, and so you're starting out low, and anything that you do could be a, have a positive uh, effect. Um, and finally, potentially it could be uh, my school without parent involvement. My school is a very diverse school. Um, my principal isn't that engaged. The administrators are. Um, but we have a lot of parent involvement because they want to be here, uh, and that allows us numerous um, potential benefits that I think are very important. Uh, debriefing, so what did I value? Um, it did make me, make me appreciate the current administration and uh, what they do and what their jobs are and all the different tasks that they have. Um, it made me appreciate the parents that are actively involved in the high school um, because they are influential and they do make a difference. Um, and it adds to the overall positivity of the school, I think. And then the appreciation of a supportive faculty that isn't shy about voicing their concerns. And I think that's important that faculty, if they do have concerns, they're able to voice them freely and openly um, so that you can get some positive feedback to help make changes that are probably necessary. And then finally, unresolved issues. 
um, that I don't think were addressed. Um, has the principal changed their mind on the issue? Um, have the different communication avenues been successful at reaching parents? So um, were you able to reach out on social media? Is that the way that they were communicating or what avenues were working? Um, and then what professional development opportunities were there aimed at strengthening the, uh, the faculty uh, knowledge about the community around them? Um, does the faculty know who the community around them is? Does the faculty live in the community surrounding the school? Um, category five, so component one, promoting academic success. Um, data shows that an increase in parent involvement leads to increase student performance, as I mentioned previously, um, that is a big deal. That should be reason number one why you want to get parents in the community involved is because it is shown to increase student performance and that's um, the purpose of schools is to provide an education. If, increase, if student performance increases because of parent involvement, you need to get parent involvement. Uh, parental and community involvement can bring in added resources to support students. Administration and faculty are collaborating on how best to increase student performance through community engagement. And that's just working on that collaboration and getting more people involved in the process. Um, the more there are, the more you're communicating, um, the better and more increase in student performance you're gonna have. Um, component two, promoting student well-being. Uh, PTA and PTO groups can help the image of the school by performing various tasks during and outside of school. Um, they can help with things during the school day um, they can get together on a weekend and clean up trash or um, help build something that's necessary if the school doesn't have funds for it. Um, they can just do various things that can help the overall image of the school. Engaging in a variety of ways to communicate with parents can lessen the reliance on students who transmit messages. That's one of the things I noticed in the case study was that they just told students to tell their parents. Well, that never works. Um, and so you need to find different ways uh, to communicate with parents because that helps promote students' well-being. Maybe the student doesn't know where they forgot. If you tell the parents, um, hopefully they can remedy that situation. Through the steps taken, the principal has become more involved and a positive step forward in the leadership of the school has been taken. Um, you set up the communication plan, you get everything going, and hopefully the principal sees that this is necessary and that this is a good thing. And when that happens, that's going to be a, a more positive step because he is the one that comes up with the overall vision of the school. You can assist with that. Um, but in, in the end, he is the boss. And then finally, promotes uh, community engagement. Uh, communication is essential to creating positive atmosphere for students in schools. Um, the more to communicate, the better. Um, you always want to communicate positive things. And even if there are negative situations, um, you want to explain those too and show, hey, here's our... Um, this happened, here's how we're going to handle it, here's how we're going to turn that around uh, and make it a success. Um, with more parent involvement uh, comes the growth of parent-teacher organizations or parent-teacher uh, associations that benefits uh, students and the community. Um, if you start with those eight people, maybe they go around and talk, you increase communication, it goes to 16, then it goes to uh, up to 30. And you just want to just keep growing that group and getting more and more people interested um, doesn't matter where it starts, it's it, it, how it keeps growing. Um, and then development of parent organizations at lower levels of the school. Um, if this was a high school setting, you definitely want to get those middle school and elementary schools involved. Um, get them excited about coming to the high school, get them excited about going to the middle school, and just engaging that whole feeder pattern, um, I think, will be beneficial to everyone involved. And then finally, involving parents, students, and faculty provide feedback can lead to positive discussions and a plan for future policies involvement, um, communication, get more people involved, um, and hopefully that will lead to more discussions, more people learning about the community and understanding the community and seeing what the needs are for, for students, for parents, and um, community members who are non-parents. Um, everyone can be involved. Thank you.